Hi, I got my wisdom teeth out this morning, so I can't be there right now, but here's me. Um, so the first thing that we built on a Rubik Goldberg machine was a constant acceleration device. So what we did is we took a 1.09 meter piece of wood and made a ramp out of it for a marble. And we made this, we put this wood at an angle of elevation of 2.67 degrees. And so obviously the marble would be the system in the situation that rolls down the um, ramp and the marble is 0 0.005 kilograms. And so this is the system. And then so for data collection in, on this device, what we did is we, we marked point, um, 0.2 meter intervals along the entire ramp. And so what we did is we did five trials for each interval. So we recorded five trials of 0.2 meters, five trials of 0.4 meters, and then 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and then um, one. So you get the point. So um, the independent variable in this case would be distance travels in, in meters, and then the dependent variable would be time in seconds. And so, switch page. Um, if we look at the data table for this, you can see how we collected it. And then, so what we did is we averaged each, um, all five trials for each distance, and then we plotted those points. So the first one would be a distance versus time graph. And so the relationship between distance and time is, um, it has a power fit in this case. And so that's the equation beneath the graph. And then, so what we did from there is we took each individual point. So we all know the velocity is um, position or distance traveled divided by time. And so what we did is we took the distance and we divided it by each um, average of the time for that distance. And that's where we got our velocity points. So when we plotted those points, we saw that um, velocity and time are related by a linear function. And so there's a um, function beneath the graph again. And so what this the slope says about the function is for every one second that passes, the velocity increases by 0 0.0131 meters per second. And so that's that. And then from there, we and then acceleration for the acceleration graph. Acceleration equals velocity divided by time. And so we took each in velocity point that we had, and then we divided it by the time, the average time for that distance again. And so that's how we got our um, acceleration points. And so if you look at our acceleration graph, it's actually downsloping, and this is supposed to be constant acceleration. And so the reason that it's downsloping is because like there's friction and air resistance as the ball runs down. And so it's not accelerating as fast as it was at the beginning, but it still levels out and it's pretty flat, so especially compared to the velocity graph. So it's close. There's a little other like factors that calculate in why it's not um, completely level, but it's pretty darn close. So that's our constant acceleration.